What better way to start off the new year than with some full moon? Puppet Master 4 is a 1993 horror film from director Jeff Burr. The movie starts off in the waiting area for Mr. Bones' Wild Ride. I'm getting a Wishmaster vibe in that Wishmaster totally borrowed this. Ooh, sexy. The evil Sutek is addressing his minions. Why aren't they looking at him? Maybe they're embarrassed because he isn't wearing pants. Uh, boss, could you put something on? He's talking about Andre Toulon, the puppet master. The secret Andre Toulon stole from us. He stole their secret? He needs to protect this secret so that others in the upworld can't claim it. Speaking of the upworld, a guy is driving to Biotech Industries. He's either wearing black nail polish or is really bad with hammers. Inside the lab, Dr. Piper is teaching a robot about color. The weird guy drops off a package for her. Hmm. Guy in all black drops off a nondescript wooden chest in the middle of the night. Nope, <laughs> nothing suspicious here. Dr. Piper calls Dr. Baker to tell him about the breakthrough. She then asks him about Rick Myers, a science prodigy that's working on a project off-site. The guard delivers the chest to Dr. Piper. Which Pokemon is this? She puts it back in the chest and goes to leave for the night. Just then, the power goes out and, uh-oh, she drops her keys and loses a finger. The new puppet, Totem, doesn't want her to leave. I guess that finger grew back. Totem kills her while the minions watch on their voyeur cam. This is what too much reality TV does to you. Totem then sucks her soul out like a tiny Shang Tsung. Over at the Bodega Bay, how does this hotel look worse than it did in the first movie? Kid genius Rick is working on robots. Hey, he didn't build that. That's Max Steel from RoboForce. He gets a call from Linda Carter. Hello. Hey, Wonder Woman. It's really his girlfriend, Susie. Blade is very excited by this. Rick is now ready to test his work. Robot laser tag. Is that a power glove? So this is what happened to Lucas after he lost video Armageddon. Well, it's better than what really happened to Lucas. Owen Wilson Jr. plays with the robots for a while, but it seems their AI is no good, so he goes back to the drawing board. He then goes on to describe 90% of Hollywood today. They showed no signs of initiative or original thought. Dr. Baker also gets one of the totem puppets. Ah, uh, no, I thought I canceled my loot crate. Blade seems to be ogling Rick as he's getting dressed. Don't judge me. Rick goes to the door, and it's his girlfriend. She brought along her friend Lauren. Well, tonight just got a whole lot. Oh, what the fu- Rickster. Hug. Don't kiss. And this is Lauren's boyfriend, Cameron. Rick explains to the group that he's the caretaker of the hotel during the off-season. Cameron and Rick used to work together at the Institute. Ugh. I used to know guys like Cameron. Mr. Caretaker. I'm starved. Where's Dindin? Let me just say, his inevitable death is very cathartic. Back at the lab, Dr. Baker is staring at the totem. Wait, is that... Is this thing anatomically correct? He has no idea what it is or why it was sent to him. So naturally, he puts it in the incinerator. Warning, top secret nuclear powered incinerator. Not so much of a secret if it's printed right on the side of it. Pretty crappy incinerator if it can't handle a puppet. Back at the Bodega Bay, Cameron is telling everyone how he sucks and Rick is better. Lauren talks about how she works in the field of psychic research. She's a channeler, which means she can sense paranormal things when it's convenient to the plot. Cameron explains his current project, which turns out to be a subdivision of what Rick is working on. Meanwhile, Totem is teabagging Dr. Baker. Lauren senses something weird about the building. Of course, it's because there's this guy right next to her. Where'd you find him? Cute. Aw, oh, the pale-faced creepy puppet with the hook and blade arms. So adorable! This is terrific. Wow, look at this setup! An old room with a computer, a soldering iron, and some toy robots. It's like NASA! Cameron wants to snoop through Rick's computer. Come on, it's not like I'm gonna steal anything. Sure you won't. Lauren goes into a storage room and finds Toulon's puppet trunk. She then passes out. This ever happened before? Yeah, every time I give her a hot oil massage. Ew! Lauren tells him they need to stay away from the trunk. What this translates to is, we need to get inside the trunk immediately. Since hammering doesn't work, they decide to go to the next level by dripping acid on the lock. This can only mean they're going to throw it on someone or something later. Andre Toulon's standing out in the rain summoning his puppets. All that's missing is a boombox blaring Peter Gabriel. The acid melted the lock, so they open the chest. 
Inside is Toulon's stage gear and a few puppets. They find Toulon's diary and a brief recap of Puppet Master 3. Susie nearly shoots herself in the face. They find the puppet's private reserve of Surge and decide to use it on them. Instead of just trying to reanimate one, they do all three. Yeah, make sure you get the one with the drill on his head. For smart people, they really are stupid. Pinhead wakes up and gives Cameron a beating. Sutek is very upset by all this. Rick then wakes up Jester. The optical effect lightning hits the roof and knocks out the power. So the power's out and living puppets are walking around. Let's split up! Cameron's upset with Rick. He opens the chest and pulls out a Ouija board. Nope! Rick decides to give the puppets lasers, because why not? Susie goes to get the door, and the man in black left another case. Cameron talks Lauren into doing a seance to contact Toulon. Something else takes over, and they summon some totems. In his room, Rick hears a woman screaming. Rick goes to the room while Lauren and Cameron leave. Cameron locks himself in the car and gets killed by a totem. And nothing of value was lost. Subtle. Susie shows Rick the trunk, but something broke out. The totem tries to kill Blade, but they gang up on it and give it a good drillin'. Aww, Pinhead's helping to clean off Tunneler. That's so nice. Here, the puppets are reenacting the cover of Abbey Road. The puppets unleash Decapitron. Toulon tells them that he is the one. Decapitron. Some totems attack, so Lauren and Susie take off. Toulon explains his secret. Lauren hides from the puppets. Wouldn't a better place be somewhere high up? Susie stops the totem from killing Lauren. Oh, here we go. She drops the acid on it. <laughs> Lauren's voice is not what I expected. You must animate the Decapitron. Toulon tells them they need to do some science and resurrect Decapitron. The electricity mixes with the reanimation fluid to bring Decapitron back to life. The acid burn totem shows up, so the puppets fight it out. Rock'em, sock'em, puppets! Decapitron puts on his attack helmet and blows it up. Woo, woo, woo! Rick, Lauren, and Susie get knocked over in slow motion. This hurts Sutek. Tulan passes on the Puppet Master torch to Rick. Speaking of torch, where is he? He's on the cover, but not in the actual movie. To be continued. The movie was directed by Jeff Burr. Burr worked on numerous horror films like From a Whisper to a Scream, Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, and Night of the Scarecrow. On Super Bowl Sunday, 1993, he got a call from Full Moon head, Charles Band. Band asked him to come in for a meeting about a potential job. Burr knew Band from the Empire Picture days. He was working on a film called The Vault that never ended up being made. When Burr met with Band, this was during the golden era of Full Moon. The demand for direct-to-video content was at an all-time high, and Paramount was handling distribution. After Puppet Master 3 was a huge success, Band wanted to make a theatrically released sequel slash reboot called Puppet Master The Movie. He eventually decided against it, and instead took the concept of Puppet Master The Movie and split it into two movies, Puppet Master 4 and 5. Band offered Burr the job to direct 4 and 5 back-to-back, -back, as well as a new series, Oblivion 1 and 2, back-to-back -back in Romania. The catch was that he had to start shooting 4 and 5 right away. The scripts were written, most of the sets and props were built, but they still had to cast the films quickly. They cast Gordon Carey as Rick, Chandra West as Susie, Ash Adams as Cameron, and Teresa Hill as Lauren. Gordon Carey was a Canadian actor whose first role was a spot on the TV show 21 Jump Street. He moved to LA to study acting and lived with a then unknown Brad Pitt. He did some horror films like Friday the 13th Part 8 and Blood and Donuts, as well as TV like a recurring character in Beverly Hills 90210. Chandra West played Susie. She started acting in 1999, and Puppet Master 4 was one of her biggest roles up to that point. After that, she did the made-for-cable Universal Soldier films, and TV shows like Jack and Jill and NYPD Blue. Ash Adams played Cameron. He was a surfer in A Nightmare on Elm Street, before a long-running spot on the soap opera Ryan's Hope. Teresa Hill played Lauren. Puppet Master 4 was her first movie. In 1994, she starred in the Melrose Place spin-off, Models, Inc., after that, she did movies like Biodome, Nowhere, and Cruel Intentions 2. The director was friends with actress Stacey Randall. He worked with her on an indie project a few years earlier called Eddie Presley. He brought her in one day, and the casting director loved her, so he put her in the film as Dr. Piper. The director had her meet Charles Band, who then cast her to play Lyra in Trancers 4 and 5. Puppet Master 4 and 5 were shot on a budget of less than a million dollars. Since it was originally one movie, the script was chopped in half and padded out to make two movies. They shot both films in about 24 days, with an additional 15 for second unit, which was mostly the puppet scenes. 
The reason Torch wasn't in the film was simply because they couldn't afford him. The puppet's a big expense since they have to bring in a fire marshal and set things on fire. With the tight budget, they decided to stick with the core puppets. There were all kinds of effects they had planned for Decapitron. He was supposed to launch tornadoes from his head, but as with Torch, they couldn't afford it, so they went with Lightning. Puppet Master 4 is yet another wonderful entry in the series. While it is short, it's only 79 minutes, that just gives you more incentive to watch 5 right afterwards. They introduced some great stuff into the series, and it was an interesting fresh start after 3. Although most folks would have preferred a two-parter of them in their continuing fight against the Nazis. They did continue that 14 years later with the trilogy, Axis of Evil, Axis Rising, and Axis Termination. What a great time to be a puppet fan!